Hey everyone, we are continuing chapter 23, specifically the slides on blood vessels and circulation, circulatory pathways. Um, we've already gone over pulmonary, coronary, digestive, hepatic, brain, hypophyseal, and now we're going over arms, and then one more video will go over the legs, and actually one more after that will go over fetal. So a lot of different circulatory pathways. Let's go over the arm. We are on slide 17. So if we want to deliver uh, blood to the arms, we take a familiar route, start here in the left ventricle, ascending aorta to the aortic arch. And from there, it depends if we're going to the right arm or the left arm. If we're going to the right arm, we have that brachiocephalic trunk, brachiocephalic artery trunk, same thing. Brachiocephalic trunk on the right side then to the right subclavian, then to the right axillary. If we go to the left side, there is no brachiocephalic trunk, it's just aortic arch to left subclavian, and then it's the same on from there. So I'm just gonna show on the right side for the sake of simplicity. <clears throat> so right subclavian, that's underneath the clavicle. Right axillary, that's in your deltoid axillary region. From there, you could go to capillaries of the deltoid axillary region. So you could innervate, or not innervate, you could uh, provide nutrients, oxygen to your deltoid muscle, to your pectoralis minor muscle, any of those muscles in that area. Or you can keep going. One major branch is the brachial artery. Quick disclaimer, there's a lot more branches than what I show here. We're only going over some of the major arteries and veins. The brachial artery, you could, deliver blood to uh, the brachial region, so biceps, brachii, brachialis, or you could keep going either to the radial side, so you have a radial artery, or the ulnar side, the medial uh, right ulnar artery. And of course, branching to the muscles on either side, say flexor carpi radialis or, or extensor carpi ulnaris, for, for uh, radial and ulnar arteries, respectively. <clears throat> Whichever of these capillaries you branch to, you will return back through veins. <clears throat> if it's coming from higher up, if it's coming from the auxiliary region, then you'll most likely come up uh, <clears throat> through the cephalic vein. The cephalic vein uh, is a lateral vein that is superficial and, and go, goes up, up the arm all the way. Cephalic goes to subclavian, subclavian goes to the brachiocephalic vein, brachiocephalic vein returns to the superior vena cava. That's one potential way back. <clears throat> Another way back, could be through the basilic vein. The basilic vein is on the medial side of the arm. The basilic vein meets up with the axillary and subclavian veins to the brachis valve vein and back. If you're coming from the radial or ulnar regions, so the anabrachial regions, Then you can come back on the radial vein, to the brachial vein, to the axillary vein, to the subclavian vein. These veins run parallel to their respective arteries. Or you could come back on the ulnar, whoops, come back on the ulnar vein, brachial vein, axillary vein, subclavian vein, and so on. One more fun alternative route. If you're coming back, say, through the basilic, you can actually cross over through what's called the median cubital vein to the cephalic, then to subclavian, or vice versa. You could come up to the cephalic vein, median cubital, basilic, and come across. So the venous route has many alternatives 
for the arm. Everything in terms of veins that we just that I just showed you for the right arm, that's also true for the left arm. I just you know ran out of room here on this slide. I'm not going to show you every single blood vessel that we just mentioned here, but I just want to show you some of the major ones, at least in, in this cadaver view. Here on this side, we have an anterior view. The lungs have been removed. The heart is down here. So we come up the aortic arch. We could go to the brachiocephalic trunk to the right subclavian, which will go on to the axillary artery. Or we could go to the left subclavian, which continues to the left axillary for the arms. <clears throat> the difference, let me back, uh, back up a little bit again. What's the difference between the radial ulnar veins versus these, these other veins? The cephalic and basilic veins are more superficial and come up more proximally. Radial ulnar veins are deeper and would make more sense for these antibrachial region tissues. On the right side here, you can see an anterior view of the right arm. You can see the antibrachial region right here. Cephalic vein runs this way. Basilic vein runs this way. And then they connect median cubital connects the two. <clears throat> Let's take a look at complete anatomy. All right, here we are. Um, just let me turn on the skeleton for a second so you can see where we are. So you can see the arms and you can see the clavicle. Let me hide the skeleton now. That right subclavian vein, excuse me, right subclavian artery and vein, they're both underneath deep to the clavicle. After subclavian comes axillary. You know what? I'm going to keep the skeleton on. <clears throat> there we go. So axillary comes right after the clavicle. There are branches coming off here and it looks like the, the axillary is just an extension of the subclavian and it kind of is. And there are branches to, to go to others, but we're not going over those branches. That's why it just looks like a straight line. So subclavian to axillary. <clears throat> Here's the brachial artery in the brachial region. And then that splits into radial and ulnar arteries. I wanna point out before I move on that using complete anatomy, if you click on an artery or a vein, you can use this menu that I just circled and find origin paths, branches, um, to see where it leads to and read more about what muscles it provides nutrients and oxygen to. And you can isolate it as well if you want. Like I can isolate just the ulnar artery. <clears throat> pretty, pretty handy. Coming back, several veins. more superficial. Here we have the basilic vein. Basilic is medial. Basilic is medial and superficial. And look how it goes all the way up. Basilic vein meets up, goes all the way proximally, meets up with the axillary vein. <clears throat> Cephalic vein is lateral on the radial side. It also goes all the way proximally and meets up more proximally with the subclavian, not with the axillary. 
or sorry, it does meet up at the last part of the auxiliary and then leads into the subclavian. Subclavian starts right underneath the clavicle. The two are connected, whoops. The two are connected, the basilic and um, uh, cephalic veins are connected by the median cubital vein. Only a piece of it is shown here. It does branch more, but it would connect like that. That's a median cubital vein. And then the deeper veins, the radial and ulnar veins, you can see are running parallel to the, their respective arteries. Here's the radial vein. Here's the ulnar vein. Both of them converge onto the brachial. Oops, that's not it. Both of them, gotta get the right angle, converge on the brachial vein. Brachial vein leads into the axillary vein. to subclavian, to brachiocephalic, to the superior vena cava, back to the right atrium. Veins are mirrored on the left side. Arteries are slightly different because remember, since the aorta curves to the left, you only have a brachiocephalic trunk on the right side. You don't have a brachiocephalic trunk on the left side. All right, those are the arms, circulation to the arms. We'll go over legs and then one more video on fetal circulation. Let me know if you have any questions.